Hello and welcome to Dreams of Wings and welcome here to Compton Abbas Airfield, a beautiful little airfield perched on top of a hill. You probably know it well and of course this particular Compton Abbas is from Burning Blue Design and they did a cracking job on it as well. Now owned by the very successful film director Guy Ritchie. Really interested to see what he does in the future. He certainly seems to get the whole aviation and especially historical aviation vibe. So it could be very exciting future here. What we're going to be doing is a really nice relaxed flight in the Spitfire from Compton Abbas up to Bath, across to the Brecon Beacons and then finishing off at Lambeda on the west coast of Wales. And we're going to be taking a look at the Authenticit trim wheel. I say trim wheel, it's actually two trim wheels. It's the rudder bias or trim and the elevator trim. We'll take a look at that in more detail once we get airborne. I've got some things to show you on that. And also, if you missed the Battle of Britain Memorial flight video that I did where I visited uh, the simulator that Phil and the Battle of Britain Memorial flight had put together, I'll put a link to that down below and you can have a look. Really interesting to see how we can have these authentic, hence their name, simulator controls in our home sims and do it really easily, which is the, the important thing. So here we are, SM520, or Gilda, as she's also known. I have a huge fondness for the Spitfire, having flown in her in real life. Of course, in real life, uh, she's a T9, two-seater, based at Goodwood with Spitfires.com. She's just changed her livery in real life, so this could be the last video that she appears uh, looking like this, but she's absolutely beautiful. Stunning old girl, and I have a huge fondness for her. Anyway... Let's get going. It's time to uh, take to the skies. Well, here we are with the best seat in the house, no doubt about it. That gorgeous elliptical wing and uh, lovely Compton Abbas. I do like it here. I've never been here in real life, but uh, it has a really nice feel to it, even in the sim. Okay, so uh, first thing to say is I am going to be using the official, official Battle of Britain Memorial Flight checklist for the Mark 9. You too can get hold of this. Uh, Battle of Britain Memorial Flight very kindly have uh, given Phil at Authenticate permission to have it and if you join the Authenticate community and I'll put a link down below you can download it from there but it's uh, it's quite a privilege to be able to use that. Obviously there are some little differences because uh, this is the, the kind of wartime Mark 9 if you like. Um, and uh, the Battle of Britain Memorial flight spits are slightly different. So there's a, f a few changes there, but uh, wherever possible, we're going to be using that. And as I say, head down to the link down below and you can download that from the Authenticate uh, website. Well worth getting hold of. It's always interesting using real world checklists, even if they are slightly different. Uh, it's all about immersion, isn't it? Immersion, that magic word that us flight simmers like to talk about. Okay, so uh, there's our trim wheel, of course, in the sim. And right next to me, I have got the Authenticate trim wheel. Huge thank you to Phil for sending this to me to have a look at and give it a try. It's uh, kind of a prototype one. There is another one being worked on at the moment, which also has the switches, the radiator flap, Peter Heat fuel pump, that sort of thing. That's actually part of a module for it. Um, but I've got one of the, the early prototypes with the two wheels on. And uh, I mean, you can see straight away, and we will talk about this more in the air. If I start turning my elevator trim, you can see straight away what a different effect this controller is having in the sim. And that's thanks to the Authenticate tuning app. But as I say, once we get in the air, I'm going to run through that in more detail for you, but uh, it makes life an awful lot easier. Okay, let's uh, head across to our checklist now, and we're going to have a look at a few things. So first of all, with our initial checks inside the cockpit, the mirror is secure and clean. It looks all right to me. Hood operational and cleanliness. Uh, we had a quick look at that before, and that's uh, all looking good. And I know it works because I slid it back when I got in. Uh, what do we get to? Hood jettison knob not pulled. Um, that is uh, interestingly, no, I've never noticed that before. It's not modelled in here. 
uh, that would be kind of if the hood was pulled forward it, it would be up here and little red ball and you uh, give that a yank and uh, hood comes off and you jump out as quick as you can uh, right uh, what do we get landing gear blow down bottle fully charged that's down here we've had a look at that that's all good to go cockpit door condition of hinges and bolts that's all looking very nice nothing to complain about there the crowbar is secure can't move that uh, control locks have been removed fuel pump is off just check down there there we go there we go it's always a bit of a tricky one to see that uh, ignition switches are off pneumatic pressure 180 psi minimum well it's slightly different in here but i know that that's uh that's all nominal we can see here port and starboard we've got full brake pressure on there with our parking brakes on fuel cock is off lander gear selector is down in the gate idle indicated that's what it says on the checklist but on the uh, flying iron spit it just says down uh, ground flight switch ground we don't have that uh, the equivalent to that is the tiny little switch here I guess uh, which we'll be using shortly which effectively in the sim connects the battery up and that's uh, when we will see everything here uh, landing gear blow down lever vertical and wire locked so it's vertical it's not wire locked but that's good enough we're not going to be messing about with that parachute static line secured to seat harness fixed attachment ring well you're just going to have to pretend that I've done that uh, parachute Cypress, Cypress, I guess it's Cypress, carry out self test. I've just self tested my parachute Cypress or Cypress. This is where someone in the comments will say, You dozy idiot. This is what it is. Dinghy, if fit, fitted in position. So we have our dinghy somewhere, uh, probably where the sandwiches are. External checks, which of course we can't do in this, but uh, it's obvious what we'd be doing there, having a good look around, testing the flight controls. Uh, having a look at uh, intakes and that sort of thing, making sure that everything is secure, checking the tyres, checking that uh, pipes and things aren't leaking and all that kind of stuff, all good things. So let's come back to internal checks. So ground flight switch to flight, so I'm going to move the forward. There we go, that's activated that switch there. We can see that we've now got the green down, which is fantastic and uh, we know that everything is working there flying controls full uh, let's get have a look at the back yeah and check the rudder that's all good so happy with that uh, wheel brakes lever on which it is uh, minimum of 85 psi per wheel well again got a slightly different setup here but you can see that we're pretty much full on there so nothing to worry about uh, right, we don't need to worry about GPS and radio because we're not going to be using it. Okay, radiator flaps are set to auto. The supercharger selector on the BBMF, it says wire locked uh, MS medium speed uh, warning light out. So that would be there, but uh, I'm going to leave it in the auto normal position for this, for this flying iron spit. Uh, rudder trim full and free movement so i'm reaching down now for the authenticate rudder and there we go that's all good that's all working fine uh elevator trim full and free movement checked against indicator set half a division set half a division up from three o'clock so this is where it gets interesting for me um hopefully interesting for you but we had a debate on the dreams of wings discord hang on a minute did you just say Discord? Yes, I said a Discord. I'll put a link down below. Fantastic community, people who are into the same kind of thing, uh, warbirds, uh, general aviation, helicopters, all that sort of stuff, aviation history. We post screenshots. We have group flights. We talk about flying. We talk about photography. Uh, there's an aviation photography section on there as well. Uh, link down below. Come along. Say hello. Anyway, we had a uh, debate on there, and don't let this put you off, quite a long debate about what the best tri elevator trim setting was for takeoff in the spit. Now, of course, the A to A spit, uh, the Mark 1, Mark 2, used to say one notch down. The uh, Flying Iron uh, manual and checklist from memory says one notch down. 
Um, but then people were saying, oh, no, I leave it neutral. I like to take off in neutral. And then other people were saying, oh, modern warbird pilots actually, actually like to have a bit of trim up. And looking at the BBMF checklist, it says uh, set half a division up from three o'clock. So I am going to do that. There we go. I flew, I did one takeoff with this yesterday with this configuration. And it did actually feel quite good. I have to say, it did actually feel quite good. So I'm going to do that and see how it goes today. Um, obviously, with it being down, you're used to the tail coming up and then eventually the aircraft kind of coming off the ground. Uh, with this one, it's a little bit more inclined to come up. That's how it felt. But anyway, let's have a look at that. Uh, pressure head heating off. That's our pitot heating down here. We've got that off. Transponder is off. We're not going to be using that. In our little imaginary world today, ATC doesn't exist. Transponder off. We ain't got one. Uh, carb filter as required. I am going to leave it in the uh, normal position here. If we were... Um, if we were taking off in the desert or anything like that, or on really nasty gravelly ground, uh, you would probably want to put that filter into operation. I think, strictly speaking, um, you know, you would you you have it in that position if you're taking off on tarmac. But uh, I'm going to leave that where it is. That might be uh, the right or the wrong thing to do. Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you are a seasoned Spitfire pilot, what position would you have that in taking off on a grass runway? Uh, where did I get to after all that waffle? Right, throttle friction as desired. Don't need to adjust that on this one. Prop fully forward. Throttle set quarter of an inch open. There we go. Let's give that a bit of beans. Fuel cutoff lever fully forward. So we're gonna in this we're gonna presume that is on. Uh, where do I get to? Ignition switches are off, nav lights are off, flap selector is up, accelerometer reset, it is reset because we've not uh, we've not done anything with it. Incidentally for the BBMF that's a very important instrument because when they're doing displays they don't want to overstress the aircraft. The important thing is to look after the aircraft, um, probably why the supercharger is set to medium speed, uh, so uh, they do keep an eye on that. Uh, where did I get to? Voltmeter, 24 volts. Well, we haven't got that. We've got uh, somewhere between 10 and 15, call it 12 and a half. So that could well just be a difference between our spit here and the BBMF spit. Ammeter, we do not have one. So we don't need to, uh, we don't need to worry about boring little things like that. Not our problem. <laughs> Uh, where do we go? Generator warning light. Haven't got one. Flight instruments condition. They are looking good. No one's tried to put a cigarette on any of them and they are looking okay. Uh, compass and DI. So we're going to have a look at that now. Uh, let's just get our head over here. Let's just set the line the compass up. Uh, I did do a video on the P8 compass some time ago. I remember I'll put a link that to that down below if you want to know a bit more about how that works. So what that is telling us is it's just over 350, maybe uh, 351. And uh, what have we got? Uh, 33, 34. So I'm just going to double check on there. Uh, so we just need to bring that over just a little bit. You do have to keep an eye on that. If you've got gyro drift enabled, uh, it will move around a bit. Uh, right, so we've done that. Engine instruments, condition, uh, they are looking okay over here. So we've got our radiator temperature and our oil temperature. And as you can see, they're pretty much showing ambient. So that's absolutely fine. They seem to be uh, serviceable. Uh, where did it get to? Fuel pressure warning light is on. We've got that down here. That's nice and red. Fuel gauge contents. Only the lower tank is gauged 37 gallons. So let's have a look in there. And we've got full beans in there. That's all good. Priming pump unscrewed. And then when we actually come to it, we'd be, uh, in the real thing, we'd be pulling that out. But we only need to pull that out once we actually start to uh, prime. Uh, where did it go? 
fuel cock is on, which it is, landing gear handle nudged down. So there we go, give that a nudge and we've got down. Harness release is locked, landing gear blow down lever is vertical and wire locked, still there, cockpit door closed. There we go, or half cock. So we're going to leave it here, it's just on the, the latch there and that's going to stop the hood from sliding forward. Flying Iron have changed it slightly now so that it's not quite as sensitive as it used to be, uh, but uh, we leave that there and then that will stop the hatch from flying forward and we've just got to remember to do that in flight. And one of the things I have to remember is not to do that because that will open the door again. Once we're in flight and I want to relatch it, that's what I want to do there. Otherwise, we have a door flying off in flight situation. Okay, starting. So we've got a cold engine. I'm going to give it uh, 7 plus 1 pumps as we pump up the jams. Uh, but uh, that's the conditions that we, we have got today. So looking again at the fuel, uh, sorry, at the checklist, fuel cut off lever, hold fully aft. Well, I'm not sure, but uh, it might be, yeah, I don't know. Might be something that we don't have. That's our fuel cock there. Uh, fuel pump on for 20 to 30 seconds, then off. In the flying iron one, uh, it kind of says either or. I'm going to, just out of tradition, pump up the jams using this wobble pump. Just because, uh, just because it's there. And I usually let it go so that the light goes off and then I give it another cup of extra just to be on the safe side. I don't know if you need to do that, but that's just me doing that. Uh, right, ground crew, warn. Lads, we're about to fire up. Ignition switches are off. Control column is fully back. Start isolate switch, uh, we don't have one. Actually, no, that's not true. We have these two babies here, that's what that, that's about. Now, this is where I have to do things slightly differently to the checklist. So I'm now going to put the uh, magneto on and... Uh, Sorry, let's leave the magnetos off. Let's leave the magnetos off for the time being. Let's have a quick look here, yeah. So I am going to prime now. I think I probably yeah, missed that a bit. Yeah, it's right at the top there. Prime the engine before you get to the other bit. So let's prime, give you another couple of pumps. One, two, three, four, five, six seven eight uh, one of the new things that authenticate have just designed now is actually the prime pump so if you've got a sim pit or you want to have this on your desk you can be able to have it that's pretty cool so we're back again i've got the stick fully back so that when the engine fires up it's helping to keep the tail down and uh, we're good to go let's give it a start so mags on everything else is looking good let's check Parking brake is on, it is, and let's fire up. There we go, all good. Quickly check that our oil pressure is rising, it is very nice. And let's just throttle back to a thousand RPM. There we go, nice and gentle. Right, a quick look over now. Don't need to worry about that. After starting checks, all pressure is rising. It is RPM set to a thousand. We've done that. Fuel pressure warning light is out. Generator warning light is out. We don't have one. Start isolate switch uh, off. Start isolate light out. Don't have one. Priming pump screwed fully in. Let's uh, while we're at it, close those babies. There we go. Uh, landing gear hydraulic indicator is now set to idle. It's changed. Fantastic. Love that. Never noticed that before. How cool is that? This is what happens when you use a checklist. You notice things. Um, uh, right, ignition switches, check in turn. All good. Happy with that. Radiator flaps open. So we're setting that to the manual position now. Charging, 
don't have one, can't see uh, voltmeter, 25 volts, I mean, slightly different in this aircraft, so we're not seeing the same. Transponder not worried about, altimeter is set, and we're at airfield elevation here. Uh, DI synchronized and caged, we have done that. How's that looking? That's looking fine. Uh, taxiing checks when we come to it, flight instruments checked, radiator temperature checked frequently, we need to keep an eye on that, we don't want to overheat, that's very embarrassing, and that is all good to go. Right, uh, what I am going to do, I'm going to taxi out now, but what I am going to do is uh, start putting full right rudder in as we taxi down. I've never, let's get moving. Take off emergencies 
uh, brief complete. There we go, right, we'll do a quick test of the engine. Now looking at the temperatures here again, we don't want it to get it much higher. Uh, we're going to set 1700 RPM, I've got the brakes on, I'm pushing or pulling back on the control. There we go, ignition switches off in turn. Drop is fine there. Drop is fine there. And now we can just close the throttle. There we go. And just because I love doing it, let's cycle the prop. Why not? I, I, it's a shame. Unfortunately, it's not like the uh, it's not like the Comanche or the old A2A spits where you used to really feel or hear the sound of that. Right, there we go, we're all good. Uh, we need to get in the air because we are getting a little bit hot. So, let's now bring it around. Again, I've got the uh, stick back. I haven't got multiplayer on or anything like that, so I shouldn't really see anything on approach, but out of habit, just checking. Last thing you want to do if you have got multiplayer on is ruin someone's day by either, God forbid, spawning on the airfield or uh, taxiing onto the runway when someone's coming to land, which uh, when that happens to me, I, I absolutely love it. It really gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling. Right, let's have a quick look around. Everything's okay. Good, 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 good. Temperatures are rising because I've been waffling to you, so we do need to get going. Everything else looks good to me. Right, stick back and to the right.
I'm just resetting the uh, resetting the rudder trim. Go back to where we were, and I'll show you actually this time, so you can see the rate. So if I move forward here, you can see the uh, the rudder trim moving there. You see it's quite slow, but as I say, with the spad next, you can uh, you can fix that and make that all that happen quickly. So that is going to be one of the next things that I do. Let's bring that down. Keep turning. Keep turning. I started turning there because I still had my uh, foot on the rudder. There we go. Try and get it. Uh, pretty close and then I'm just going to central it there. Right, so let's get rid of you and now we're going to use the uh, the gorgeous elevator trim wheel. There we go. You probably know the default position of the trim if you don't have any of this set up is it it's, takes a long time to get anywhere with it. The beauty of this setup is that uh, we've got precise control but the physical wheel is moving the same as the real thing so I have got everything set up and I'm going to talk to you a bit about that I've got everything set up so that my physical wheel, my authenticate wheel has two revolutions between zero if you like and the hundred in terms of the trim which is how it is in the Mark 9 and the BBMF and one of the great things about Authenticate is that because they have this direct access to the BBMF uh, they can get this, this kind of precise calibration so using the software that's what I've got so I can move trim very quickly but I can also move it very precisely so let's talk a little bit more about that I'm just uh, having a quick look over at my map to make sure, uh, yeah, we're not a million miles away from Bath, as you can see, just on the nose there. So I'll try not to waffle too much um, because uh, we're going to do a little bit of sightseeing there. I, I say it every time. If you watch the videos, you're probably used to me waffling on, but this sim is so damn realistic, and I've got uh, I've got Rex Accuses and advanced it. And the trees have just started to turn green now. Uh, as of course we're, we're now officially in spring. And it just looks absolutely beautiful. It really does. Stunning. So let's fly over Bath. And then once we're over Bath, I can come back to talking about the, the trim wheel a bit more. But I want to have a look at... Um, I want to have a look at the Royal Crescent. We've got a castle. Just looked at the map and I can see we've got a castle. Have a look at that. Looks like it's one of the Orbex POIs. Always good to have a look at a castle, especially in a spit. Getting a few stutters today. Yeah, I think something hasn't quite. Have I missed it? Let's quickly come round and zoom in on the map as well. Be looking in the uh, the wrong place. Got the scale out on the map. Uh, 
Dunder Mifflin, so that might be it. Anyway, sorry, not as exciting as I thought it might be. Let's uh, move forward. That was, uh, was it Beckington? Yeah, Beckington Castle. I'll have to remember to Google that afterwards and see if that's what it looked like. Okie doke. So, back onto Bath. Yeah. So, we're going to have a look at the, the Royal Crescent. Uh, many, many years ago, I uh, lived in Bath for a short time when I was doing some training with a job. And uh, came here a couple of times. It's a great time of year in the sim. Colours are really rich. And you've got that uh, difference in shade with the trees as well thanks to uh, your season. Sorry, conscious that I'm moving my head around rather a lot, which is probably not a huge amount of fun for you. This is the kind of flying I love doing, and I guess you could say this is uh, probably kind of traditional Dreams of Wings channel kind of flying. Warbirds, beautiful scenery, this is what it's about. Right, here we are coming up on Bath now. Just going to swing it round a little bit. So that we can get a good view. There it is. The Royal Crescent, been used in films. It was used in the original uh, Oliver, built between 1767 and 1775, and that is a uh, that is an Orbex POI, I think. Quite spectacular in real life, and Bath is a lovely city. It's got the Roman baths. Although when I lived here, I uh, was more interested in the pubs and nightclubs as a break from studying. But there you go. It really is gorgeous scenery today. This is what it's about. This is what it's about. Warbirds, reasonable weather, lovely scenery. I'm going to stop waffling about that. Right, let's get back to the trip, for crying out loud. Honestly, going on and on about scenery all the time. So, uh, what we, we've got, so we've got the hardware, thanks to uh, Phil. So we've got our hardware here, we've got a, uh, a rudder wheel, and we've got an elevator wheel and as I say the the version that he's working on at the moment also allows you to add the switches down at the bottom that I was talking about but anyway we've got our we've got our two wheels and uh, what we're doing is using the uh, Authenticate app which is a very useful little piece uh, of software it's actually been written by a chap called Ian Coleman, who's a member of the Authenticate community. This, this whole thing is very much community driven, and I think that's one of the marvellous things about it. It's not a, not a huge corporation, it's actually the, the members of the community, the enthusiasts, the, the people that are actually using it. Uh, this is Bristol, by the way, uh, that we're flying over. It's the, um, the people in the community that are putting it all together. And uh, Ian produce this software tuning app and that allows you to have control over your controls now I'm not a, I'm not a techie person uh, I think there's uh, and I certainly used to think that Authenticit was all about techie people look there's an Ikea do you need any furniture? Um, yeah I thought it was all about you know highly technical building cockpits and soldering and uh, that you had to have a degree in engineering to be able to do it and it's not like that at all. A dumbass like me can use these kind of things. Trust me. It's 
uh, it is actually very easy and that's kind of where I'm coming from with it. I will link to Ian's videos, they are absolutely fantastic. He is a natural at explaining all this kind of stuff. Nobody can do it better than him and I'm certainly not going to try. So I will link to his technical videos below which will give you a lot more information. Certainly anyone out there, it's Bristol Airport, anyone out there who is uh, who's really into the technical side of it, have a look at those and you can see the full potential. But essentially what I've done here is I've taken the hardware that he has uh, very kindly sent me, which consists of the 3D printed parts uh, and the electronics already assembled. By the way, you can, uh, you can buy, if you haven't got a 3D printer, you can actually buy the hardware, the, the electronic parts, and then there is a team of chaps who will do the 3D printing for you. There's a, a kind of a set recommended price so that you know you're paying a fair price. And it's, it's as easy as that. And again, I'll put a link to that down below so that you've got that. So essentially what we're doing is uh, we've plugged in our hardware and uh, you can, if you like, just have that as a normal controller. And Microsoft Flight Simulator will see it it will understand it but again you've got that same you know a little bit of the wheel movement a bit like you see in the Bravo a little bit of the wheel movement um, and you get a little bit of movement in the cockpit and it can take a while to adjust trim and that kind of stuff so with the tuning app we can have some control over that and uh, this is how I've set it up here as you can see and this works absolutely fine for me. What we're doing is we're using uh, probably the the best, most accurate method uh, for our elevator wheel, which is using encoder to axis method. And what we're essentially doing, as I said, is matching two rotations to between zero and 100% of the, uh, the trim input. What we've also done is used uh, piece of software written by Leo Bodner and we which has set the board not to treat buttons 11 and 12 which is our elevator trim buttons if you like because that's essentially what it is not to treat them as an encoder and in that way the authenticate tuning app is is reading the raw data now what all this means is that we get an incredibly smooth trim that we can move quickly as in the real thing but also it means that we can get really nice precise control over it and it does feel great that's one thing I can't get across to you actually in the in a, in a video because you can't feel it um, but it does feel really great and if I start moving it now you can't you can't see my trim wheel but the the trim with the animation doesn't necessarily always match what the trim wheel is doing if I if I move things a bit you can see it's jogging around a bit and sometimes the animation will overrun the way I've got it set up but if I look at the trim indicator it's exactly matching what I'm doing and that's the great thing and you can actually use the Windows uh, game controller software to see that you know your uh, your two rotations are giving you what they're meant to do so don't worry too much about the animation look at the instrument and uh, feel how she flies but it is a very very clever piece of kit trim is so important when I first started flight simming years ago I never really bothered with trim I didn't have a trim wheel wasn't really that fussed about it but trim really is your friend taking off with full right rudder makes it easier it's as simple as that it helps you as the pilot and uh, that is what it's all about and having these authentic kind of controls like a, I reach down to my left now and there's a trim wheel that feels like that looks and in the right place as well in VR the immersion is fantastic when I flew the uh, simulator up at the Ballabri Memorial flight the immersion of being in VR and having a trim wheel right down there was, uh, was absolutely wonderful really felt great anyway let's have a quick look around T's and P's everything is looking fine and within limits nothing to worry about there RPM just come back a little bit on that as we're in the cruise I have been waffling so much about trim wheels uh, where are we now we are just coming up on Pontypool actually looking at the map so we are in uh, we're in Wales 
comment section on the Discord and um, it's not so much about me organising group flights, it's, a, it's somewhere where if you fancy uh, flying with other people and you're looking for a way to do it then you can just uh, post up a, a flight in the group flight section and off you go. See who comes along. Build it and they shall come as they say. Let's just uh, reset to my head tracking a moment here. There we go. I've been moving, uh, moving things around a bit, and it got lost. So yeah, I thought uh, I thought this would be a bit different. I uh, some might say, why are you flying SM520 Gilda out of Compton Atmos and not Goodwood? Well. I wanted to do a slightly different route. I've done Compton Abbas before. Uh, sorry, I've done Goodwood many times before. And of course, uh, quite often in Scotland. So I thought I'd uh, do this a slightly different route. Compton Abbas is absolutely stunning. Burning Blue are, are almost about to release at Old Warden, by the way. That will be, uh, be great to see. So uh, yeah, I just thought I'd do something different and see some different scenery and honour good old Gilda as she was and look forward to seeing her as she is going to be. Right, let's just come round. There we go. And then we've got Penny Fan up on the nose.
vertical pole just to keep it sturdy. By the way, uh, these funny square blobs of trees here, I was just looking at it thinking, blimey, that looks almost like something's glitched, but they are there in real life. That's the beauty of the simulator. They are there in real life. So our next waypoint is a, uh, a little lake called, and again apologies for pronunciation, looks like it's Thlin Brian. That's our next one. Just enjoying the scenery, bobbing around. There is something beautiful about looking out over an elliptical wing. That scenery like this, it is gorgeous. YouTube 
YouTube algorithm and it helps spread the word and all that kind of stuff. So where are we? I'm not even going to try and pronounce that but that's Neuro uh, just on the wing. There we go. Neuro just over there. I'm not going to insult the Welsh by trying to pronounce the little village that we just went over but it looks something okay. All right you, you asked me to. Pont Rid E Grows. Pont, Pont Rid E Grows. Pont Rid E Grows. Probably doesn't sound anything like that. We, of course it won't sound anything like that. But uh, there you go. What do we got over there? Uh, Devil's Bridge Waterfalls. Down there somewhere. Someone was telling me about those recently. Where's the map? Yeah, it's just over there. Someone was telling me about that recently. He said they visited it. It was very nice. All right, let's come back. Quick look at everything down here. That's all tickety boo. Come back on the RPM again a little bit. My T's and P's are looking good.
if it would be to do this in real life. So, let's have a look, what do we got in the way of winds? Uh, four knots from 271. So, nothing much to worry about at all.
so let's just try and concentrate a bit more now. Okay, gear down. Trim.